Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, tonight, tonight, I just felt like the Lord wanted to do some ministry right now before <clears throat> we go uh, later on and do some ministry. But I just want to do some prophetic ministry right now. There's some people here tonight. There's more than one. It's very strange, but all the way back into your childhood, you've had a dream that comes to you, and it's like a nightmare. It's like a night terror. It is like when, when you have that repeating thing or even a piece of that dream, it's almost like it just brings fear on you. Who is that tonight? Real high. I want you to come right up here in the very front. Just quickly come. Just quickly come. It's like a, it's like a repeating dream. Just come right here. So these three, I want to say, you two as well? Oh, you as well? Okay, so all four of you, five of you. Uh, let's spread you guys out. Are you catching or are you? Is it you too? Yeah, yeah, both of you as well. Just jump in the line. Just jump in the line on the other side right here, sweetheart. Yeah, just jump right over her. Yeah, that's cool. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. There's one more person. You're supposed to be down here. You have this dream like when you were a kid. It's like a death dream, and it comes back every so often, and it's like you sweat and you get nervous and all of this stuff. Who is that tonight? Who is that tonight? Just come. Come right now. I want to say it's a woman. Ever since you were a little girl, you had this. Yeah, come right now. The Lord's touching you now, see? See, God's touching you just for obedience, yeah? Just all six of you lift your hands. You, you too, brother, yeah? You, oh, you, you guys as well, okay. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I set you free right now. I set you free of that thing. It's like you've been afraid to dream because you're afraid that thing will come back again. And so I just take authority over it right now. In the name of Jesus. You're not going to die. You're going to live and declare the works of the Lord. You're not going to die. I'm telling you, you're not going to die. It's just the enemy just trying to intimidate you ever since you were a child. And uh, even like throws other things in it and just wicked stuff. Tonight, the Lord says he's going to rip up the videotape in your head. He's going to rip up the videotape. God's going to rip up the videotape for you. He's going to rip that videotape. You're never going to see it again. It's just going to be something you don't even remember anymore. So tonight, in the name of Jesus, just lift your hands. As you do, the fire of God comes on you. Father, burn that thing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, help us right now. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Vando bu rimando brusa savataka. I set you free. I set you free. That's why the enemy fought you with praying in tongues. He fought you with praying in tongues. I'm not just saying it generally. I'm prophesying that to you. That's what the Lord says. He fought you with it. The enemy fought you with it because he doesn't want you to break that thing. He wants you to carry it all the way the rest of your life. But tonight it's going to burn. I'm telling you, that thing's going to burn loose right now. Out. Out. Joy. Lord, fill her with joy. Joy of the Lord, touch her tonight. Joy of the Lord, touch her tonight. In the name of Jesus, joy of the Lord. That depression, that depression that comes with that thing, I set you free. Free right now. That fear interferes, inner doubts of yourself and all of that stuff that come from that thing, I set you free right now. God speaks something different than that dream does. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. I set you free in the name of Jesus. God's touching it right there. Jesus' name, all the way down, all the way through the bottom of her toes. In the name of Jesus, free right now. Be free. I set you free. I set you free, sis. No more. No more. This is the last night you'll speak of it. I set you free. 
The Lord ends it tonight. The Lord ends it tonight. The Lord ends it tonight. That chapter's over. That chapter's over. It chap- that chapter's over in your life. You too. It's over. In the name of Jesus, I set you free of the condemnation, how it beats you down. In the name of Jesus, I set you free of the roots of it. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. I set you free right now. I set you free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free in Jesus' name. I command that thing to go in Jesus' name. Go right now. In the name of Jesus. It pulls you back to your old life, that, that, uh, that dream. So tonight I break its power. In the name of Jesus. It's like an umbilical cord to your past. I see like it like tries to grab a hold of you and suck you back to the old life. So tonight we break its power. We break its power. We break its power in the name of Jesus. We break its power. We say loose right now. Loose. Loose right now. Free right now. I set you free. No more in the name of Jesus. No more in the name of Jesus. No more in the name of Jesus. No more in the name of Jesus, brother. No more in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your presence. Come on. Yeah, her too. Yeah, just lift your hands all over the house. Father, thank you for touching people. Come on, just lift your hands. He'll turn your mourning into dancing. He'll turn your weeping into joy. Thank you, Father, for touching people tonight. No more weeping. No more weeping in fear. No more weeping even to go to sleep. No more being fearful to fall asleep. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for it tonight. Amen. Amen. Come on, give Jesus a big hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. So everyone do this. Just stand up. You know, the Bible talks about prophecy. It talks about the simple gift of prophecy is to speak edification, exhortation, comfort, right? So that's simple prophecy. Simple prophecy doesn't have revelation in it. It's just simple edification, exhortation, comfort. So I want you to turn to someone who is not your spouse, and I want you to tell something wonderful about them. Look them in the eye and tell them right to their face something you love about that person. Come on. Go find two people and tell them something you love about them, all right? All right, well, praise the Lord. Woo. It's not me. Is that you? No, it's not me either. It's not me, guys. I don't know who it is. All right, well, welcome, everybody. Any visitors here tonight? Raise your hand real high just so we can see you. Come on, keep your hand up real high. Come on, give them all a big hand. Ah. We got people here tonight from Naples. We got people here tonight from Lake City up north. Where else are all the visitors from? Just shout it out loud. Say again. Tampa. Say again. California. She's the farthest. Who else? Brandon. I miss anybody? All right. Well, cool. Awesome. Uh, my name is Tom Scarella. My wife, uh, Susie, and I are uh, traveling ministers from Minnesota. Uh, so we're excited to be here tonight and to, to minister to you. So tonight's going to be a little different. Is different okay? Yeah. Different all right? So tell your neighbor, say, tonight's going to be different. All right. So just chill. All right. But so it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to flow a little different, but that's all right. Uh, We want to say thank you to your wonderful pastors. Come on, give them the biggest hand. Come on, man. Show them you love them. Come on. That's it. 
These guys are awesome. So you have great pastors, amen. How many of you think you got the best pastors in Florida? <laughs> I love it. So um, we appreciate them and their friendship and for having us last night and tonight. And uh, so listen, at the end of the service, <clears throat> we have a book table out here with a, a number of different CDs and, and, and books and manuals and all kinds of different stuff. I encourage you to check it out. We bring it not because I have extra room, but we bring it because we know how it impacts people. So I encourage you, if you're hungry for God, and you can do it. All the prices are out there. Just give me a few minutes to get out there. We've got some worship out there. We've got some uh, prayer music out there, soaking music. Uh, this one here was done by Reinhard Bonke's worship team for us. Uh, some others from the Kansas City House of Prayer did this. And, and then we also did a whole series called uh, Hearing God's Voice and how to stir up hearing God's voice uh, in your life. Um, I'm going to show you a video clip. I had a couple of them, but just I, I don't want to belabor it tonight. But I want to show you a dear friend of ours. I'm not going to do mine, brother, the TSM one. I'm going to do the Prophet Corbus one. So I, had a, uh, I have a friend who's from South Africa, and they just had incredible, crazy miracles in their ministry. Over 17,000 cripples rise and walk. <laughs> crazy. I mean, that's more than Oral Roberts had even. So... Um, but absolutely incredible. And, uh, but I just wanted to show you a couple of uh, videos of miracles because it will stir your heart for tonight. Watch this. She was able to talk, but now she can't talk. Since when? Since Wednesday, she could what? not talk. Did she just get weaker, weaker, yes. weaker? Yes. What is wrong? How long is she walking like this with a walker? Four months. Four weeks. Four weeks. Jesus, strengthen my sister now. Give her back her life. Give her back her life. Can't walk, can't talk. Look at me, my sister. Jesus Christ is going to give you back your health tonight. Walking, talking, living. It, yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Talk, talk, talk. That's all right. Sorry. I can talk. Can talk. Jesus. I can talk. Mama, I can talk. I can talk. Okay, Mama, I can talk. Come on, there goes the lady. Now you can walk too in Jesus' name. Jesus the Christ of God. Ha ha ha. Perfection. A brand new spinal cord. Every vertebrae, cushion, tissue, every bone, every piece of flesh, everything to be totally restored and renewed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. No more weakness, no more pain. No more difficulty, no more, no more, perfected. Whew. 
cosa. For two years. <laughs> two years, never a second without pain. Never a second without pain. And now? No, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. I was rubbing my legs thinking, when is this thing going to be over? <laughs> they were hurting. I was going to leave shortly. Because I, I didn't think I was going to make it. She thought she was not going to make the meeting because of the pain. <laughs> Paula, bless you. Let it never come back. I seal you now with the spirit and the blood of Jesus Christ. Perfected by grace. Covered by his Just blood. For Just for you. That's why he died, just for you. Without you? I can work without you. All pain? All pain. Swelling? Swelling. And weakness? And weakness. Is leaving my body. Is leaving my body. I'm healed. I'm healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That nice, <laughs> huh? I'm so happy. I don't know what to say. I'm happy. Is the pain gone? <laughs> Thank you. Come on, somebody shout the praises of our God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Command this positive HIV thing to leave. All pain and weakness to go. Let it test negative and let a life show it right now. All weakness. All symptoms go, all pain leave. In Jesus' name, I set you free. And now? I'm free. What happened? I'm free. Huh? I'm free. You're free. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. What did you feel happening to you? Thank you, God. What was wrong? What did you feel? I'm free. Did you have pain? No pain. But before? Before I touched you? Many pains. Many pains. And now? Yes. No pains. No pains. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a big hand clap. Is that good? From 2000. Yeah. You helped in here tonight. Ah, uh, yes. praise the Lord. Ah, God's good. Amen. Thank you guys in the back. So uh, tonight, if you have uh, your Bibles with you tonight, I want to just share some things with you from God's word. Hallelujah. Y'all okay tonight? Good. I hope you're stirred up in the spirit. Amen. And uh, so praise God. You know, last night, we, I started to talk about, you know, dreams and stuff like that. And how many of you are dreamers again here? Let me see all the dreamers. You dream at night a lot. Okay. And did you dream last night, huh? How many of you dreamt last night? See, a lot of times it happens when you talk about it, it stirs that your spirit, man, like opens up. Did you dream last night, brother? No? Did you? No, 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 you. Did you too? Yeah? Okay. Awesome. So, uh, so whenever you talk about it, you kind of stir it up. And so I, I'm not ministering on this tonight, but I just want to throw a couple of nuggets out. Is that okay? Is that all right, anybody? So, so there's a couple things. Some people were asking me at the book table some stuff about dreams and stuff. And, and, and many people don't realize that about 80% of your dreams are about you. Other people may be in the dream, but it's primarily about you. And there's, there's certain indications 
of your dreams when God is speaking to you in the nighttime. So you have to realize these are metaphors, all right? These are parables. These are not literal things. So sometimes God will use a house. How many of you had a dream of a house? Maybe an old house. Anybody? Okay, it speaks of your life or your calling. Okay, so God is not complicated. So you're going to help me here. Okay, so if you have a dream of your old house or of a house and you have a dream of the front yard, it speaks of the future. God is talking about this is going to happen in the future. So if you have a dream about your backyard, what's it about? It's about your past. Okay, so something in your past. So if you have a dream of something in your house, your living room, what is God talking about? Your current life. Is that right? So if, if, if you have a dream, someone said to me one time, Tom, I had a dream I was going down a long corridor, a long hallway. Okay, is a hallway a destination? No, it's a transition. Is that right? So a long hallway speaks of a long transition. Okay, so you're transitioning from one thing to another. So God is saying this is going to be a long transition. Hang on, don't get in a big hurry. Come on, right? So some, you see something in your bedroom that speaks of rest, right, or intimacy, right? If it's your attic, what does your attic speak of? Your thoughts. If the basement, you know, the basement's flooding or corroded or something, what is God speaking of? He's speaking of your foundations. Your foundations are bad. See, and so God's saying get your foundations fixed, see, so all of these are metaphors or parables that will begin to help you begin to understand your dreams. So you have to ask yourself a few questions. Now, this has nothing to do with the sermon. I'm just throwing this out for extra tonight, okay? So this is for free. Is that all right? So, all right. So number one, you have to ask yourself, where are you in the dream? Where are you in the dream? Are you an observer or are you a participant? So are you observing the dream or are you in the dream? Okay. So, and as you begin to ask yourself these questions, now it begins to unravel. Even visions are the exact same thing. Now, some of you have more visions than dreams. Okay. So not to get confusing, but how many of you were drifting asleep or just waking up and you thought you had a dream? How many of you ever had something? That's called twilight. And so during twilight is where you have visions. It's actually a vision in the night. <laughs> according, to Ezekiel, according to Job 33, it's a vision in the night. So you could be just drifting asleep, and you're like, whoa, I had a dream. Okay, well, it wasn't a dream. It was a vision in the night. Okay, so it was technically a vision. So you weren't quite asleep yet, you understand? And so, but God will speak to you in those times, and that's usually where you have deja vu. How many of you ever had deja vu? Or you're like, man, I've been here before. You know what deja vu is? It's a vision where God is telling you, you're on the right path, keep going. Okay, confirmation, right, Pastor Jeanette? Right. So it's just a, a confirmation that you're on the right path, okay? So that's all it is, all right? So what is the, you have to ask yourself, what is the main dream about? So you ask yourself, what is the collective meaning of this dream, okay? And then you ask yourself this, is there something strange in the dream? This is really important. Because the unusual thing, that's the thing that God's trying to get your attention with. So the same thing with a vision. So see, you see something, you're like, what the heck? That doesn't even make sense. I was in a rowboat in my living room. But see, it's a shocker, so God shocks you so that you wake up and you're like, what the heck? You understand? So, but it has something to do with it. It's to get your attention, okay? So something strange, something odd, something uh, out of the ordinary, okay? So it can be a simple dream or a complex dream. But you have to be careful that you don't get lost in the details. Well, there was a, rat, a red rabbit, and this red rabbit was running around and stuff. And, okay, but was that essential, or was it just a side thing? Okay, well, then don't focus on the red rabbit. Just keep, you know, going with the other part of what God is saying in it, all right? So, um, so these, I'm, I'm going to give you about five of the most common dreams. How many of you ever had a dream that you were 
going to the bathroom in public. Okay? It's speaking of cleansing in your life, and everybody's going to see it. That's what God's saying. It's a good dream. God is encouraging you that God is cleansing things in your life that he, he, everybody's going to see the fruit of it. How many of you ever had a dream you were flying? That means you're growing spiritually. How many of you ever had a dream you were falling? That means something's out of control in your life. God's rebuking you. God's saying something's out of control. Get a hold of it. All right? So uh, let me see here. What else did I write down about it? Uh, how many of you ever had, you had a dream you were pregnant? It means something new is coming and you're going to bring it forth. It's not literal. You're not really pregnant, but you felt like you were pregnant. Why? Because this thing is about to bust out of your life. Okay, so that's what uh, it is. Uh, uh, dreams you lost your purse or your wallet. Okay, it means that you've lost your identity in Christ. You have to get back to your identity of who you are in Christ. That's what the dream is speaking about. Losing your wallet, losing your, your purse or something like that. Um, okay, I already talked about that. Ba -ba -bum. Let's see. Uh, windows. You have, a, you have a dream. I'm in my living room. I'm looking out this window. Uh, and, yeah, you did? Okay. That means how you see the world. But in other words, if you had a dream that the windows were covered, that means that you don't see very well. You're very narrow-minded. You understand? But you may have these big windows and everybody sees in. Well, that means your vulner vulnerability. How vulnerable you are, especially to God and, and to other people and stuff like that. And so... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I just wanted to throw a few of these out to just kind of get you thinking. How many of you ever had a dream that repeated? It was the same dream another time. That means you're not getting it. <laughs> you're not listening. <laughs> or you're not getting the message right. So God just keeps sending it to you till you get it. Okay? So that's why you keep having that same dream again because God is trying to speak to you about something. All right? Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that's good. So dreams, uh, uh, let's see, visions come two different ways. They come with open visions like Paul t had there in Acts chapter 9. And you can also have a vision of the mind. Now, how many of you have ever been walking in, or you've been, ever been just praying and someone popped in your head? Raise your hand. Anybody? That's a vision. It just popped into your head. Just out of nowhere. Let, let me ask it like this. How many of you have ever woke up in the morning and a song was already playing in your head? Okay, that's a vision. That's a vision. You had a vision. So you, your spirit, man, was picking it up from God, and when it pulled it into the earth, as your, your body was waking up and your soulish man was waking up, your soulish man is looking at it like, this is stupid. I don't even like this song. <laughs> you know, I don't even like the Doobie Brothers, all right? I mean, but it's playing in my head, you know what I mean? Or whatever it might be, you understand? But, you, but God is using that song, something in the lyrics of that song to speak to your spirit, man. Okay, or it could be somebody popped in your head or a scripture or a scene or something like that. Okay, so, and, and that's usually where visions occur as well. So, uh, praise God. All right, is that all right? Is that Okay. So many people say, why doesn't God just say it? Why does he got all these symbols and stuff? Because he loves to reveal it in little bits. And he wants you to get hungry. He wants you to seek it out. Amen? So he doesn't just say it. He wants you to seek it out. And so as you dig it out, now all of a sudden you begin to appreciate it more. Amen? So that's why God doesn't just say it often in a dream. So often you have to dig it out. Okay, so go with me to the book of Acts. All right, that chapter's done. Lord, release me, set me free to go off tonight's message. So Acts 19 says, And it happened when Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, and he found some disciples, and he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We've not so much heard there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. 
Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying that the people should believe on him who should come after him, that's on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when they laid hands on them, everyone say laid hands. Okay, so laid hands on them, what happened? The Holy Spirit came on them, and what? They spoke with tongues and prophesied, right? Just like last night. Now you jump all the way over to verse 11, and it says, And now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So here in verse 6, they laid hands. In verse 11, Paul started to do unusual miracles by his hands. Okay, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons were brought from his body to the sick. Diseases left them and evil spirits went out of them. So where did that occur? Through the hands. Through the hands. God has elected to use believers' hands. So go back to your left. Go back to uh, Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Actually, uh, stop, pit stop in chapter 13. We're just going to hit one or two verses. I'm not going to read all of it because we want to get ministering to the sick. So chapter 13. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 13. Now in the church that was in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Okay, he says, in the church, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who's called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And the Holy Spirit said, now separate me, what? Barnabas and Saul, for the work that I have called them. Then in verse 3, it says, then having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them. In other words, they separated them through the laying on of hands. And they sent them away. Now go over to chapter 8. Chapter 8. So in chapter 8, verse 15, verse 15, uh, uh, Acts eight fifteen. who when they had come down, they prayed for them that they may receive the Holy Spirit, for he had yet not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Is that right? So they received the Holy Spirit when? They laid hands. Chapter 6. Look in chapter 6. Chapter 6. So we don't lay hands just because it's fun or it's religious. We lay hands because it's a biblical precedent. So in Acts 6, it says, um, verse 5, and, and, the pleasing, uh, and the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, oh man, I can't even say that dude's name, and, and uh, Nicanor, Timon, uh, Parmias, and, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom uh, when they sent, uh, uh, set before the apostles and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. They laid hands on them, right? And so they laid hands on them. So again and again and again, we see chapter after chapter uh, where the laying on of hands. Look over in Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Now we could go all through the Gospels and see the same thing. But I want to hit the book of Acts. So we're kind of going back to front. So in Acts chapter 5, verse 11, so great fear came on all the church and upon all that heard these things, and through the hands, right? Everyone say, through the hands. Through the hands, it says, of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch, and none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord multitudes of both men and women, so that they even brought the sick out into the streets, laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter may pa pass by, fall on some of them. And a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those that were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. All right? Uh, you can see again and again and again through all, through all of these different scriptures, through the hands, through the hands. 
go over to uh, Mark chapter 16. So Mark chapter 16, in one of the most well-known verses where it talks about the laying on of hands. Verse, 15, uh, verse 14 says, Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they didn't believe those that had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Hallelujah. Right? And he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Okay, so he says, listen, these signs are going to follow you. In my name they'll cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it'll by no means hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Is that what it says? <coughs> so it says they'll lay hands on the sick. Everyone say they'll lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. So verse 19 says, So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven, sat down on the right hand of God. And they went out, and they preached everywhere, and the Lord was working with them, confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. So leave that verse up there. The Lord was working with them, not for them. The Lord doesn't work for you. You don't say, Holy Ghost, you be my errand boy. Go over here. Go over to Tampa and go heal that lady and go over to West Virginia and go over here to, come on, talk to me here. Go over to Clearwater and go do this. Holy Ghost, you go. No, no, no. They laid hands. They laid hands on the sick. Now today, in a Christianity today, we just take prayer requests. And then we wonder why we don't get people healed. Thank you for your enthusiasm tonight. But in the Bible days, they laid hands and then they saw miracles. Amen. So there's something about the laying on of hands. There's a transfer of miracle power. Amen. So one of the last videos that that blonde lady she, that was in the video, you don't, realize this but she was from baltimore and she flew with a broken spine to south africa 19 hours one direction for three days to get healed i'll say that one more time with a broken spine with a walker and a and a and a, and a um, wheelchair she flew to the southern hemisphere of south africa a 19-hour flight. How do I know it? I've done it 20 times. I've flown to South Africa 20 times. 19 hours there, and it's about 16 back because you catch the headwinds. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I like coming back. I don't like going. Yeah? But so it's 19 hours to get down there, right? And so here she has excruciating pain. And so the, the service was going long. You, you didn't hear the discourse before. But she was going to leave. She was in so much pain sitting there in the seat. She just told her husband, I can't sit anymore. My, pain, my back hurts so bad. And so about that time, uh, my friend in the video grabs her, stands her up, just lay hands on her shoulder, and she was healed. And that was her daughter that was screaming with her and jumping around and dancing and stuff. So that was her daughter. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Amen. And she's still healed today, and that was uh, uh, 15 years ago that video was taken. Come on, somebody. And she's a personal friend of mine, so she told me the story personally and everything else. So she, we, we know her personally. We don't just know her from a video, so we know this woman. But uh, she had broken, I forget how she broke her back. I think it was in an accident or something like that. But I say this, is she didn't just say, remember me in prayer. We were over here in Orlando about uh, uh, six years ago. We were ministering in Orlando. And so while we were ministering there, this lady came to the service and she said, I want you to remember my daughter in prayer. She said, my daughter has severe scoliosis. She's nine years old and she's in bed right now with tranquilizers because of the pain. Little nine-year-old girl, her, her back was like an S. She said, my daughter can't even carry a backpack to school anymore because her spine will snap and she'll be paralyzed. This is just right over here in Orlando. And so I said, no, I'm not going to remember her in prayer. You're going to bring her tonight and she'll get healed. I, don't, I said, let me ask you a question. And she goes, well, I don't know. And I said, well, wait, wait a minute. How long have you been remembering her in prayer? 
She said, two years. I said, if you're driving from Orlando to Miami, and two years later you're not in Miami, are you on the right highway? So I said, two years later, you're still not there. So I said, you must be on the wrong, the wrong track or wrong road. Is that right? So I said, so it sounds to me like you've got to get on a different road. So I said, get her here tonight, and let's see a miracle. So they brought her there that night, and just being honest with you, I forgot. And so I'm praying for, I'm get, trying to get people together. They just did not have good trained ushers. Jesus set me free of untrained churches. Oh, God. Drives me crazy. So I'm up on the stage. And I'm frustrated with the ushers because the ushers are standing like this. You know, I'm like, dude, open your eyes and get the people in a line because we have 200 people getting up for prayer. You know, now unbeknownst to me, the little girl was right there in front of me. And so I'm directing the traffic. And so as I'm directing the traffic, I heard a pop. I thought it was a microphone it was the girl's spine begin to straighten out because I just brushed her hair. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I didn't even lay hands on her. I just brushed the top of her head. And she was instantly healed, and she screamed and hollered. And her mother came with a tumor the size of a quarter on her hand that was paralyzing her hand. And the tumor dropped off as the daughter was healed at the same time. Come on, everyone shout, lay hands. So see, the devil doesn't want people to get lay hands. You know, nobody goes and says to a doctor, doctor, I, I'm, not, I'm too sick to come to the doctor. I mean, how dumb can you get and still breathe? That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. If we're having a healing service, we're expecting sick people to come. Come on, somebody. Is that right? We're expecting sick people. I'm expecting people laying on the floor and vomiting and, I mean, sick. You know, I'm talking about sick, right? And so I, that blows my mind. I'm too sick to come to the healing meeting. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't understand that. Are you too sick to go to the hospital? You know? So, amen. So, so here it says in that verse, they went out, they preached everywhere. The Lord worked with them. The Lord worked with them. The Lord worked with you. The Lord is working with you. The Lord is not working for you. He's not your Uber driver. He's not working for you. He's working with you. If I call Pastor Tony, I say, Pastor Tony, listen, my house needs a brand new roof. Can you help me? And he says, man, I don't know much about it, but I'll do my best. I'll come to Minnesota. I'll help you. So he flies up. He comes and he comes to my house. I say, Pastor Tony, here's a belt full of tools and everything. All the shingles are up on the roof. And uh, let's go for it. And so Pastor Tony climbs up the ladder, gets on my roof. Man, it's hot. It's, it was 100 degrees here just the other day, 102 degrees in Minnesota. And so, man, he's up there and he's sweating, right? And so he's nailing and he's working on my house. And he's like, hey. He's been up there for 45 minutes sweating. He's like, what the heck? Where's Tom? And he comes down the ladder and he walks in the house. And I'm sitting with a Coke and a smile. In the air conditioning with a big bag of Dorito chips. And I got nacho cheese all over my fingers. And I'm like, how's it going up there? He's like, whoa, 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 time out. We must have a crossed wire. I thought you said... We're gonna work, we're gonna do this together. We're gonna, I'm gonna work with you, not for you. In other words, you gotta do something too. <laughs> I said, you gotta do something too. I I'll try this church over here. You gotta do something too. All right, come on, tell your neighbor, say, you gotta do something. Okay. So it's not you're just God's gonna be your little Uber boy and go do it all for you. No, no, no. You have to do something. So what does God say? You lay hands on the sick and then they'll recover. Amen. So you have to do just that little effort of doing something. You trigger the miraculous. Is that right? So the moment you have that mindset, there's something about it that 
instantly you'll begin to start to see a, a, a miracle take place. Now, right after we left and, and moved to Minnesota back in uh, 2016, I went and uh, we went and we were scheduled to minister in this church in Wisconsin, in, in Wausau, Wisconsin. And so I told the people one night, I said, tomorrow night's a miracle service. Bring as many sick people. I said, bring the worst cases you can find. So one lady comes to my book table. She said, are you serious? I said, I'm dead serious. I said, bring the worst case you can possibly find. She said, my next door, my, not my next door neighbor. She said, a friend of mine I used to work with got muscular dystrophy, and she lives in a house for the disabled. And I said, great, bring her. Let's see her get healed. So she said, all right, but I have to, you know, organize it where they have to bring her by a special bus, you know. So they bring this woman by this special bus in this special power wheelchair, and she's shaking like this the whole time. Now, you can go on our YouTube channel and watch the whole video. You can see that I'm not exaggerating one bit. And someone caught it on video. And so this woman was there. That night, God spoke to me, gave me a word of knowledge about someone had a parasite. And this woman speaks up and says, that's me. That's how I got muscular dystrophy. So I said, come, the Lord wants to heal you. So we bring her on down to the front. She's shaking like this. She's 38 years old. She's already filled out her last will and testament because her doctor told her you're dead by December. And this is October. She said, the doctor told her you're dead. You'll never see Christmas Day. Never. You'll be dead before Christmas. So here she is, 38, and she comes down to the front, and she comes down to the front. You can see me in the video. I mean, it, 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 you can see me grab her. I pick her up out of the wheelchair, and she's shaking like this. I said, in the name of Jesus, shaking, stop, walk. And she, I said, take a deep breath and walk. And she, you see her go, and all of a sudden it stops, and she goes, boom, boom. And boom, she takes off walking. And she ran around that church, y'all. Come on, somebody. And she was completely healed and never touched the wheelchair again. She stood the rest of the service. I said, Angie, I said, you can sit down if you want to. And she kicked the wheelchair, brother, like that. I mean, she kicked it over. She goes, I've been sitting for, for 10 years. You think I want to sit down? Come on, somebody. She goes, I'm never touching that thing again. Come on, somebody. And she's been free now. That was uh, five years ago. So we were ministering over uh, tomorrow, uh, a Saturday. I'm ministering in Lakeland, Saturday and Sunday. So Saturday, this same church that I'm going to, we ministered there about four years ago. And I told the people the same thing. I said, I dare you to bring the worst case you can. I said, I don't care if they're a Muslim, Mormon, or an atheist. Bring them. And so this lady comes up to me. She's like, are you serious? I said, yes. I told Angie's story. And she said, my neighbor is an atheist, and they have an autistic daughter. Never spoke, one, uh, never spoke a sentence. She could speak a word, but she, could, she was almost savat. She couldn't carry on a sentence. You know what I'm saying? So I said, bring the girl. So they bring the girl. And uh, <laughs> so the mother's name is Brandy. I know that now because she ended up getting saved, and she's the church secretary now, so, all right? <laughs> Is that awesome, huh? <laughs> so, so they're in the last row. They've never been into church in their life. They're looking around. Their eyes are bugging out. They're all freaking out. I tried to relieve them. I'm like, yeah, we swing from the chandeliers here in a little bit. They didn't laugh. They didn't think that was too funny, but I thought it was funny, you know? I was trying to break the ice a little bit. They were so nervous. Their eyes are all bugging out. And so I said, bring the girl down to the front. Come. So they bring her down to the front. And uh, so um, as they, they come down to the front, I went and I just put my hand on the little girl's head. And I just spoke to the electrical system in her brain. I just felt in my heart that something was wrong with the, the some, something electrical wasn't connecting. And so I spoke to that electrical system. I had a word of knowledge, I guess. And I just spoke to her. I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. I felt nothing. She felt nothing. So I take my hands away, and I just stood there. 
And the little girl turned and looked at the mother and said, Mommy, I'm hungry. Let's go to McDonald's. I mean, the mother fell. I mean, the mother fell on her face, bawling her eyes out. Never heard her daughter speak a sentence. And the daughter was nine and a half years old. Come on, somebody. That little girl is in regular school today. Come on, somebody. And the mom and dad go to church. Hallelujah, because they're saved. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everyone say, lay hands. Now, what have we just said? Let's just remember them in prayer. You know what I mean? We just remember them in prayer. No, there's something about the power of laying on of hands. You just lay hands on. Some of you got saved through someone laying hands on your pillow. <laughs> Some of you wives, maybe you laid hands on your husband's pillow. God, sick him. Don't even let this man sleep tonight. Sick this man. <laughs> But, but I want to read you another scripture. Look at this scripture. This is really awesome. This is what God spoke. I was going to do last night, I was going to share this scripture out of Deuteronomy. So go to Deuteronomy, the last chapter. So this is, a, this is the scripture I was going to read last night until the Lord changed it at the last minute. And so Deuteronomy 34 says this. Because we want to lay hands on you tonight. So Deuteronomy 34, verse 9. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses, ah, what did Moses do? Come on, say it out loud. 4,000 years ago. Moses what? Come on, Moses what? Moses laid hands on him. And the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. But since then, there's not risen a, a, in Israel a prophet like Moses who knew the Lord face to face in all his signs and wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt before Pharaoh, before all his servants, in all his land. And by all his mighty power and great terror, which Moses performed in the sight of Israel. Now, that's the end of what's called the Pentateuch. Because the Pentateuch means five books. So that, the first five books of the Bible. But the goal was to get the children of Israel out of Egypt. So you have to flip the page to Joshua 1. Because Joshua 1 is connected to Deuteronomy 34. Okay, so they're still connected, all right? So in, in Joshua 1, it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, and Amplified says it like this, arise and take his place. Arise, take his place. Come on, right? Everyone say, arise, take his place. What did God do in this house? Is that right? This is what God spoke. I was going to share this last night. Take his place. Is that right? What happened in the same house, right? Arise, take his place, go over the Jordan. In other words, go on to the promised land, you and all the people. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. To the land that I'm giving them, the children of Israel, and every place that the sole of your foot shall tread, Pastor Tony, the Lord says, I have given you as I said to Moses. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Is that right? Come on, somebody. So here he says, every place the sole of your foot shall tread. So now it's not just your hands. It's even your feet. Why? Because God's power is flowing through your body. I tell you what, you need to start walking around some stuff you want to see God touch. Come on, somebody, walk around something. Some of you want God to bless you with a new car or something. Walk around that thing in the name of Jesus. I just take authority in the name of Jesus. I claim this for the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. I mean, walk around something. Walk around a crack house. I walk around this. I cancel this in the name of Jesus. I just take authority over this thing in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. 
Why? Because God's power flows through your hands and through your entire body, even your feet, even the soles where your feet tread. God gives it to you. Is that right? God will give it to you. Everyone say, God will give it to me. But you got to do something. God's not, you're not just going to be sitting at home watching ESPN and God go does it for you. No, no. You have to do something. Your faith has to go out there. You got to put hands on something or somebody. Come on. Amen. And just by simply doing that, you activate it. Amen. And so we always had miracles in my ministry all the way back to 1982 when I first got saved. So I got saved in 82, all the way from 82, all the way, I always had miracles. But I never saw the lame walk like that man. So in 2006, right before I met your bishop, I went to South Africa. And I said, do I need an impartation from you to do this? And this man said, no, you got it. You're in Christ. Everything you need, Colossians 2 says, you're complete in Christ. Come on, look at someone say, I'm complete in Christ. So in other words, God fixed you completely. Come on, somebody. The only thing stopping you is between the ears. It's your thoughts is the only thing that's stopping you. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor, say, the only thing stopping me is, is, is my own thoughts. So God answers that at the end of this. Are you ready? So be strong, verse 6, and courageous. For to this people I'll divide you an inheritance of the land that I swore to their fathers. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all that's written with Moses my servant commanded you. Don't turn from the right hand or the left, that, but you may prosper wherever you go. Come on, everyone say, I prosper wherever I go. Now, he's going to tell you how to prosper wherever you go. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mind or out of your head. Come on, right? Or out of your, excuse me, out of your mouth. Excuse me. But you shall what? You shall what? You shall what? Meditate in it once in a while. Once a week is more than enough. Maybe two times a month. Maybe all these Bible studies and stuff for the faith home, that's way excessive or something. Oh, no. You know what it says? You shall meditate on it. That you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. For then you will make your own way prosperous and you will have good success. Is that what God says? So everyone say meditate. So in other words, it's your thoughts. Your thoughts are what's connected to it. So Whatever you think, however you think it, the only thing stopping you, it's not an anointing, it's not an impartation. Come on, somebody. It's not a calling. The only thing stopping you is your own thoughts. Amen? There's no gift of the Holy Spirit God is withholding from you. He says all of them are available and all of them are in you in Christ. Come on, right? So if any man is in Christ, the Scripture says he is a... New creation, or in the, in, in the Greek it says, he's a new species of being that never existed before. That's how it says it in the Greek. It's a new species that never existed before. God created a brand new being in you if you're in Christ. So, but you operate differently. It, it begins in the way you think. Can, can I get, uh, 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 just put that music on quietly for me, will you, brother? So, Tonight, I want you to begin to start to think differently. Begin to realize all that's available in Christ is already inside of you. Everything you need, it's already inside of you. You don't need anything else. Come on, somebody. Thank God. We're hungry. God, speak to us. God, minister to us. God, help us stir up those gifts or whatever it might be. Praise God. Right? But the problem is not your spirit. It's not your heart. The problem is your mind. It's your thoughts. That's the battleground. I said, that's the battleground. I said, that's the battleground. So when you got saved, you were one-third perfect. Tell your neighbor, say, you're one-third perfect. So your spirit's perfect, but your head could be all jacked up. Is that right? 
Your body could have its issues and stuff like that. But God, Jesus died for your spirit, soul, and body. He died for all three, but your spirit man is recreated instantly, right? So instantly, bam, it's done. <laughs> Nothing needs to be added or come on somebody, amen? But your thoughts, your thoughts are still attached to that old life. So you've got to change the way you think. And so God is trying to get you over your inner fears and say, hey, be bold and lay hands on that person at Walmart. Lay hands on that person at, at Publix. Come on, somebody. Yeah, but what will people think? Most people don't think, so there's nothing to worry about. I mean, when we lived here in Florida, I remember one time I was, I was cooking on the grill, and Susie said, oh, i got to get... I got to get some more chicken. Give me a second. I'm just going to run to Publix. We live like two blocks. And like, I, I've got everything, you know, on the side of the burner. And I'm like, where is she, man? It's like 30 minutes. What is this woman doing, you know? So, like 40 minutes later, she comes home and she's like tears in her eyes. I said, what's going on? And she said, I was there. And uh, I walked by the bakery and there was a lady weeping. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, I have uh, impacted wisdom teeth. And she said, my boss told me I can't go home. My, my jaw's all swollen. And so Susie said, I take people's pain away just like yours. She put her hand on the woman's mouth. All the swelling went down. The bleeding gums went down. Come on, somebody. All of it vanished. She was healed. And she was a Jehovah's Witness and got saved. Come on, somebody. Is that awesome, huh? So how is it connected to your hands? There's been times where I laid my foot on somebody and they got healed. Amen. That's how Peter could just let his shadow fall. Why? Because God's power, God's anointing was in him, even just touching sick people. Come on. Amen. So all the anointing of the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of you, all you have to do is expect. So the only thing we ask you to do tonight is expect everyone say expect so that's all we ask tonight is that you expect that god touches you the moment we lay hands on you amen amen so father tonight in the name of jesus lord we give you thanks we give you praise we thank you lord for all that you've done for us in christ lord we thank you for the old is gone and the new has come and lord we give you thanks in the name of jesus that you've called us to lay hands on the sick you've called all of us to lay hands on people and minister to people with your power and with your anointing. And God, and God, we give you thanks and praise for it in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. So I have to be obedient to this before we do anything. The Lord won't let me loose to this. Pastor Jeanette, Pastor Tony, stand up. Just stretch your hands to your friends right now. I just felt like the Lord spoke to me to do this. Tonight, the Lord says... I've called you for this hour in this place to do greater works than have ever been done by the hand of my grace. For now the Lord is calling you to walk into a brand new space. You're going to begin to see that your mind is, is, is stretched. You're going to begin to see miracle signs and wonders like you've never seen before. The Lord says you're going to see signs and wonders like will shock even your own natural mind. As you just step out in faith, this will be known as a healing place. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Amen. Woohoo. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Amen. God's good, right? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> glory. I said glory. So, praise God. So, if there's people here tonight, first of all, that you have a terminal disease like cancer or HIV or something like that, just raise your hand real high. Anyone tonight? Yeah, I want you guys to come first. Just come on down here. Just come on down here, sister. All the way toward the front. We're going to bring everyone else up who needs healing now the bible doesn't say that they'll lay hands on the sick and say all these things and stuff like that but the scripture just says they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall what recover 
So some people get all bent out of shape about what do I pray? Do I say in the name of Jesus? Do I say in Jesus' name? God doesn't care what you say. Scripture doesn't say, you know, we're not trying to do incantations here. We're not doing witchcraft. Come on, somebody. But we're, we're, we're doing spiritual uh, activity whereby we're laying hands on the sick. And I believe this, it, it, that, that you don't even have to say anything. I mean, literally, we've seen over, over 2,000 cripples rise and walk in our ministry. Over 2,000. We, we even stopped counting. I don't know how many it is. You understand? And so again and again and again. Just last week, we had all these lame and crippled people rise and walk and stuff. It was just great. And so some of them, I didn't say anything. I just said, stand up. Come, stand up. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. And just I just walk with them, and they're healed. Or I would just take their walker. I, one, one lady, I took her walker away. Give it to me. Go. Next. <laughs> I mean, that was it. You understand? Why? Because I laid hands on her. I said I laid hands on her. I said I laid hands on her. Amen. So God is wanting you to be involved. And so depending on the time and everything else, maybe we'll do something like that. Okay. If you need healing for anything else, raise your hand. Okay, so stand up, and then uh, just work your way on down here, if you will. Ushers, you may have to line them up. You guys, you want to take about one step forward? Yeah, I'm going to start with you guys here in the front. Yeah, so ushers, if you want to make like three lines or something, or if you want to run them down the walls, that's fine too. Hallelujah. We come alive in the river. Is that right? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I, all I ask is two things. Number one, you expect. Everyone say expect. You expect that healing goes into your hand, the, in your body the moment I lay hands on you. Number two, the second thing. Now look at me. I want to get all your attention. I don't want to lay hands on you and you just go sit down. Because then you might as well go sit down now. Because everyone in the Bible was healed when they did something. So often the miracle happens in the movement. That's why Jesus said, stretch out your hand. Rise and walk. Take up your bed and go home. Come on, somebody, right? They had to do something. Everyone say, do something. So if I can't lift my arm and I don't lift my arm, then how will I know if I got healed? You understand? If I can't move my knee, but I lay hands on you, and you just oh, I'm going to just go sit down. You, you did nothing. There was no faith action. Everyone say faith action. So there has to be a faith action. Is this okay, Pastor Tony? Okay. I, and so I didn't know how you want to do this with the offering and everything else. We'll just keep going. All right? So all of you up here, just raise your hands toward heaven. Thank you, Jesus. So I just take authority over every sickness in the house. I take authority over you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I take you under my control. Right now, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit causing sickness and disease and death in people. I take authority over you. I break your power tonight in the name of Jesus. And I speak healing and wholeness to your body now. I command you be healed in the name of Jesus. 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 The Lord makes you whole tonight. The Lord makes you whole tonight. The Lord makes you whole tonight. Be whole. Be whole, be whole, be whole. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Those of you I laid hands on you, do what you couldn't do. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Do what you couldn't do. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Pain go. Cancer go. Free right now. Out in Jesus' name. Be healed 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 in Jesus' name. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Some of you still aren't doing anything. Be healed in the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. Set you free. Set you free. Free right now. Free. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Pain go. Be healed in Jesus' name. Do what you couldn't do. Be healed in Jesus' name. 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 
Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, tonight for healing your people. I speak healing to your body. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name, Pastor. In Jesus' name. Be healed tonight. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Do what you could not do. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Free right now. Out. Out of his body right now. Be healed. Be healed. Pain go. Do what you couldn't do now. In Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. What's wrong? What's wrong? Is it oceans? But it's in your legs. Yeah. So put your hand right here on your leg. Yeah. So in Jesus' name. Legs be healed in Jesus' name. Cold go from her right now in Jesus' name. Just move your legs. Just move it. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed, brother, in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Do what you couldn't do, my sis. In Jesus' name. Be healed right now. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Be healed right now. I set you free. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. I set you free. I set you free. Cool shirt. Be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Be healed in Jesus' name. I set you free. What's going on? What's wrong? Yep. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Yep. Put your hand on your eyes right there. It's in your eye. Is it? Is it in your eye? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, put your hand, put his hand on your stomach. Yeah. In Jesus' name, be healed. Be healed. Just gently rub your eyes. Gently rub your eyes. Gently rub your eyes. Rub your stomach. In Jesus' name, be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. 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 Thank you, Father, for healing. Right now, you too, you need healing? No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. In Jesus' name. And now? Move your hand. Just look up. Look up. Look into the light. Look up into the light. In the name of Jesus. Just begin to move. Use your eyes. Anything you couldn't do, just do it. Just do it. By faith. By faith. Be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Do what you couldn't do. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name, brother. Be healed. Do what you couldn't do. Be healed right now. In Jesus' name. Be healed right now. All the pains in your body, go. Now begin to do what you couldn't do. Be, don't just stand there. Do something. Do something. Do something. Be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. Faith is in action. Faith is not just getting hands laid on you. Faith is in action. You do something. Do something. Just by faith, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed, brother. In Jesus' sickness, pain, go right now. Now do what you couldn't do. Be healed right now. I set you free in the name of Jesus. I set you free in Jesus' name. Do what you couldn't do, brother. Be healed right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, right now. Yeah. What's wrong? Is it? Yeah, put your hand right there. Yeah, so in Jesus' name, pain go. Difficulty in her thyroid. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The Lord ministers healing to it. In Jesus' name. You check your body even over the next few days. You watch. And you? What's wrong? in Jesus name be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the Lord was healing you even as I walked up in the name of Jesus the Lord's healing you and you lungs be healed just take a deep breath one more time be healed take a deep breath real deep breath be healed in Jesus name and you what's going on Is it? Yeah. 
So spine be healed in Jesus' name. Spine be healed. Pain go out of her spine right now. Every nerve, every muscle, every, every ligament right now in Jesus' name. Every vertebrae go back into place in the name of Jesus. Bend over, touch your toes in Jesus' name. How about you? What's wrong? What's wrong? Yeah, Lord, I pray right now. Minister healing to his thoughts, Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name for healing, in Jesus' name in this man's life, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for healing his heart. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do what you couldn't do. Just check it. Just check your body right now. Just move it. Do what you couldn't do. That a boy. That a boy. Go for it, brother. Come on, someone help them. Help them. Help them. Help them. Hallelujah. That a boy. In Jesus' name. Pain go. Pain go. Weakness go. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> I think someone needs to ring the bell for him. Come on, ring the bell for him. Come on, ring it. That's a healing bell. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord one last great big hand clap tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for healing in people's bodies. God, we thank you for laying on a hands. Just stretch your hands toward heaven. Father, thank you, Lord, tonight. We don't have to pray for an anointing of healing. There's already healing in their hands. Lord, you said, I didn't say it. You said, those who believe shall do these things. They shall lay hands on the sick. And then they will recover. And so right now in the name of Jesus, we believe that word. We believe that word. Come on, everyone say, I believe it. Come on, say this out loud. Say, I believe. There's healing in my hands. I believe there's healing going through my body. Sickness is leaving me. Pain is going out of me. I, I, depression's going out of me. Joy is flooding me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord one last big hand clap. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You, in the name of Jesus, Pastor Tony, it's all yours. Yeah. Hallelujah. Woo! Testimony. Amen. Wow. Look at your neighbor and say, you got it. Amen. Have y'all been blessed? Woo! How many people would like to have Brother Tom come back? Amen. We're going to work some. Amen. Amen. Well, what we want to do now, we want to um, bless Brother Tom's ministry, Evangelist Tom Scarella's ministry. So please raise your hand um, if you need an envelope. You know, he's a minister that comes. He doesn't come with any prearranged requirements. Amen. He just said, listen, just take up a love offering or whatever the church can bless me with. We'll take it. Amen. Amen. He covers all his expenses. Amen. So Lighthouse Freedom Center, let's bless him. And uh, sow your best seed. Amen. Amen. And as you have it ready, you can bring it on up and put it in the golden wheelbarrow. Hallelujah. Amen. How many people received that message, the laying on of hands? 
Amen. So you know we're going to be doing more of it in here, right? But also we release you now to go and do it in your community. Amen. Be bold, church, at Publix, at Walmart, your neighbors. You see somebody going by sick, say, hey, can I pray for you? And let's operate in this word, amen, because God is ready to do some supernatural things, amen? Amen. Well, thanks, everyone, for coming on out, amen, and uh, let's go by the table and support Brother Tom's ministry and uh, bless him, amen. Have y'all been blessed? Amen. Let's lift our hands up to the Lord. Father, we just thank you tonight uh, for what we received in the spirit. And Father God, we thank you for the word um, of laying on of hands. And Father God, I just believe that um, this church is going to be known, Father God, as a church that moves in miracle signs and wonders, Father God. That people can come here and be healed supernaturally by your power. But it's going to fire them up so much, Father God, that they're going to become evangelists for you and take what they receive from here and take it out into, into the community. I speak that into the atmosphere of this church right now in the name of Jesus. You believe it? You join your faith with me? Get ready. God's going to do it. Amen? Amen. Let's lift our hands up to the Lord. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Amen. Be blessed. See you all Sunday morning. Amen.